Thank you. Thank you. All members, eighty moment, basically. Sir, thank you very much. Sir, sir, time sir uh, this piece of legislation. This piece of registration is like a fate a company one. Sir, in 1961, Educate Act was based on certain authentic reports and uh, recommendations of the Judicial Commissions. And uh, 1980, 18, uh, sorry, 1879 Act was there. When 1961 Act covered all the issues raised in the other Parent Act, and that is perfect. Unfortunately, this particular thing that is pertaining to touts was missed in it. This is to fill up that. That is the scope of the Act. That's okay. Now, sir, what I'm, I would like to point out is, I heard uh, the former speaker's speech. Mainly, they are all, uh, not only MPs, they are uh, eminent uh, lawyers also, legal luminaries. They were all sharing certain apprehension. Number one is, how is the procedure in identifying and listing the touts? The procedure stipulated when this act is having confusion. So that is to be readdressed. So they were uh, citing certain burning issues, such as deterioration in the judicial system of our country. Similarly, sir, there is a wide kind of uh, criticism that impartiality and independence of Indian judiciary is diminishing like anything. That also is a point of concern. Sir, another point which you have raised also, sir, lack of, uh, uh, lack of uh, representation for underprivileged sections, SCST and OBC. Sir, there is no judicious combination in the higher judiciary, as far as these marginalized sections are concerned. Sir, uh, we all know that uh, trustworthiness of the judiciary should be adhered strictly. No doubt about that. All kind of unfair practices should be curbed. That also is truth. Transparency, uh, transparency and uh, ethical values should also be strictly adhered. We have to ensure there is no loopholes in the existing structure to lose the trustworthiness of judicial system in our country. Sir, we all know the relation of the, or the responsibility of the lawyers. Section 1 of the chapter 2 of the part 4 of Bar Council of India frames code of conduct and etiquette of advocates and prescribed duties of advocates in the court. Sir, that is very clear. Code of conduct was laid up. That shows that lawyers should not take up any cases where crime may have some wrong thinking and there should be a clarity over that also. Similarly, sir, the unfair practices, wherever it is, it is to be curbed and this should be discouraged. So, then not only that, Code of Conduct says that lawyers should not promote any kind of unauthorized practice to make like advertisement and source of work like that. So that kind of canvassing also should not be there. That also can be treated as a, a bad practice. Similarly, lawyers' responsibility has also been categorized in that. What is that? They have a responsibility to court to do justice. In that way also, the relation with the judges, that also is a very important thing. In fact, sir, lawyers, it's not just a profession like that, sir. It's a noble profession. It's a very sacred profession. In that way, a lawyer is duty-bound to educate his client not to have any kind of unfair practices, sir. As far as judicial credibility, transparency, and accountability is concerned, the whole nation is worried about that, sir. Any kind of lapses taking place there, is a trouble one, I a very worrisome kind of thing. We have to address that also, sir. Similarly, sir, the relation with judges and the lawyer, that also is a very important thing, sir. Like that, you know that bar, that is advocates, and bench, that is judges, play an important role in administration of justice. The judges administer the law with the assistance of the lawyers. The lawyers are 
the officer of the court. It's a very important thing, sir. Unfortunately, there is some kind of misunderstanding developing with certain judges and the lawyers. That also is an unhealthy practice. Yes. That also may kindly be addressed. Sir, towards the end, I would like to say, I would like to say one thing, uh, one thing for uh, uh, what is called a loud thinking. Now, sir, what is happening? There is a, a complicated situation. Judges, it's a very, very, very powerful position, and it's very important also, as far as the Constitution is concerned. But I would like to make one just a submission, not a conclusion, for the loud thinking of this house. Reappointment of the judges. So judges, unfortunately, they may have a hope that after retirement, government may give him some new appointment. Is it a healthy practice? If this kind of practice is continuous, will it not affect the transparency and accountability of the judiciary? That's a point to be debated. We all know the story of that. I don't want to go to the depth of it. They should not have an impression that after retirement, if we do something for the government support, for things, that kind of a tendency is bad tendency, that kind of tendency should not be encouraged, and we have to lively think whether we have to give such kind of appointment for the judges after retirement. This is the few words. I want to submit all this. With this few words, sir, I can go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable members, Jinardan Singh.